Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're going to look at this problem called a snake and ladders problem. So basically what we're doing here is we have a snake and ladder board and we want to find the minimum number of controlled snake and ladder moves to complete the board. What this means is that the dice, when we throw it, we control the amount of uh, the, the output of the dice basically. So the output of the dice being from 1 to 6. Okay, obviously that dice has to produce some output from 1 to 6 because when you throw it, it has 6 numbers six possibilities we want to find the amount of controlled moves which means that we control the output of that dice we, we want to find the minimum number of those paces in which we can complete the board let's take a example of this particular board over here and in this board what you can see is we have 30 cells and we're going from 1 to 30 and if I take suppose I'm at cell number 1 and I output suppose 2 on the dice so when I throw the dice I output 2 and I move 2 paces uh, 2 steps 1 and 2 and then I get this ladder over here I go up I come to 22 and then I throw through the dice I get a 6 I go 1 2 3 4 5 6 I come up to 28 and I throw the dice I get a 2 so 1 2 so these are basically 3 steps I come over here I throw the dice once, I come over here, I, I automatically am transported to cell number 22, I throw the dice again, I'm transported over here, which is the second throw of die, and I throw the dice one more time and I'm transported to 30th cell, which means I completed it, which means I completed the entire board in three steps. That is what we need to find, the minimum number of moves in order to complete the entire board, and with the output of the board controlled. Now, uh, in order to explain how the board is made in the program, let us sh switch over to the actual program itself. So here we have the exact board recreated. So here we have 30 cells in n. n is the basically number of cells. Let me type that down. Number of cells. And essentially an array goes from 0 to n minus 1. So what we need to understand is that the cell will be denoted by not 1, 2, 3, 4, but starting from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if there is cell number 22, it will actually be referred to by the number 21. And uh, if, and initially, every board is set by this value, which is minus 1, every cell in the board, which means every cell in this int array over here, the board array, which is an array of 30 numbers in, in this case. So each, each of those cells is set to a number which is negative 1. But, 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 if there is a ladder in, in the position of a cell which takes that from one cell to the other, suppose there is a ladder at cell number 3. This is not cell number 2, this is cell number 3. And this is not cell number 21, this is cell number 22. If there is a ladder, the values of the, the elements of the array will change from, suppose, you will read this as the ladder at board number 3 will take you to board number, to the cell number 22. The ladder at cell number five will take you to cell number eight. So that's what this exactly means. And over here, snakes, if there is a snake at a particular cell, you will say the snake at cell number 27 will take you to cell number one and so on and so forth. So we have recreated this entire snake board, snake and ladder board over here in a coding environment. So, and here we have the implementation, which is a bit convoluted, but you'll understand what I'm saying. Uh, just for right now, just remember this, that static class Q entry, which is a, a static class, obviously, which we named over here, it consists of int vertex and int distance. Distance is basically the number of moves which we'll be taking from the source to the destination. Distance is a bit different, it, it's a weird name, but I think you can get the point of it after the end of this tutorial. You understand why it's essentially called distance. And vertex is basically the the value of the array at that position and we'll see in the presentation how this turns out so now we're going to start with the actual implementation using a queue we're going to use a queue in this implementation and uh, let's start with it the queue initially starts with the representation of each cell as an entry inside the queue so whenever you input an entry inside the queue you will represent six other cells with it let me show you an example what is done so initially the first step is to install or enqueue the first cell. The first cell is represented by vertex 0 and distance 0. Why vertex 0? Because as you know the array starts from 0 and the cell starts from 1. So in order to represent the the board in the in the coding format we have to start from 0. So the vertex is 0 and the distance is 0 obviously because the distance from the source is 0. Then what we do is we dequeue this entire cell 
and then we add the next six blocks of the cell board and how does this happen so how do you add something so suppose i have this block initially and then i want to add this this and this and this up till seven so this is the second block and how, how do you know what to give the values for vertex and the distance so here the vertex value is two minus one which is obviously going to be one so vertex value is one and distance value is the the previous distance plus one similarly and you will be wondering for for cell number three why is the vertex 21 well because there's a ladder from 3 to 22 and as you remember initially in the code we had board of 2 equal to 21 so the value will be 21 over here and the cell will be 3 because the value of the board the board the, the array board the value of board of 2 equal to 21 so that's why this is 21 over here if you don't understand you go look up the code again uh, the code is in the description as always so and the distance is still distance plus one uh, so distance zero plus one is one so that is how that works again you have to add as you remember six of those nodes six because when you throw a die the values can be between one and six including one and six so that's how it works and you it, and you increment the distance by one in every single position so here vertex number Three, uh, three. Three means four. So four minus one is three. So that is representing this one. Here, five. Here, there is seven because there's a ladder from five to eight, and eight minus one is seven. As you know, we can't represent the values as as actual numbers. We have to subtract them by one in order to represent them in the array. So yeah. So the first, after dequeuing this, you add six others to them to the exact same queue. So then, what is the 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 sanest thing to do? We have to dequeue the next particular node so this node when it we dequeue it we add six of the nodes but but now what happens is that the six nodes which come after this will eventually be you'll get this one this one this one this one this one so six one two three four five six so up till eight so all of these are already visited so you don't need to visit them again so instead only one cell will be added which is the 8 cell and if you see there is no ladder from here there is no snake so it will be 8 minus 1 which is 7 and distance will be 2 because the distance was 1 over here so 1 plus 1 is 2 remember the distance always increases by 1 so if you see that it takes 2 moves exactly 2 moves to get from here to here and then you kill this node but this node has a vertex of 21 which means that the act in the actual board it is 22 so 21 or 22 plus 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and I add them all in the queue and I get vertexes 22 23 24 25 1 why 1 because there is a snake head at 27 so when I or, or the, in the array representation 26 and if I die I go come back to 1 which is then you kill the next vertex and when you kill that one you basically are killing this one over here the fourth one so for adding after adding the fourth one you need one two three four five six and you add two more cells okay that is as we just showed in the representation then you kill the other one you add six more and here the seventh vertex is basically uh eight minus one which is seven over here and you get one two three four five six up to 14 and 14 minus one is 13 here that is 25 because there is a ladder from 11 to 26 which is 26 minus 1 25 and the distance is 2 as you can see the distance remains same for all of these and now the distance still remains the same as you have 5 and if you check out the fifth vertex over here this is 6 1 and you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 which goes to 12 and if you go in on enqueuing everything you eventually come to a position when all of them will be enqueued and let's see that they are enqueued up to this position 27 or this one because from here we go to 22 and then we add six more and let's say we reach over here in the 28th cell after pulling down a six at 22 and we go to 28 and then we enqueue what the remaining two cells are that is the 28th cell uh, or in the real representation the 29th cell and the 30th cell and eventually it comes to you know the 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 entire representation of the code goes through the entire queue and dequeues and queues and goes through the entire process and it reaches this particular node and now what happens is that you dequeue that node and when you dequeue that node you dequeue the next node and when you dequeue the next node you realize that the vertex is 29 and 29 is n minus 1 so 30 cells n minus 1 is 29 
So you realize that, okay, 29 is where I need to reach in the code representation. In the real representation, it's obviously 30. So 29 is where you want to reach. And then you stop. So the distance is 3. So how did we get here? We went from 0. You enqueued 6 of those nodes or those cells. And then 6 more, 6 more, 6 more until and as you increase the number of moves you added one to distance and distance is basically the number of moves which is three so that's how the entire program actually works just nq and then dq the cells one by one so let's go to the code and actually see how this works out okay so now that we're done with the presentation we can come over here and look at the code in order to know what exactly is happening behind the scenes so as I told you, this Q entry is very important as it stores the vertex and distance as we, as, as we saw in the presentation. So the main function, there was this uh, function call which was minimum dice throws which takes a board argument which is the array obviously and an n which is the number of cells in the program. And that uh, function is defined over here. It's called the minimum dice throws and it takes the same arguments obviously. And then over here we have defined a boolean array which uh, we use in order to keep track of the visited cells so if there is a cell which is not visited it is denoted by a false and if there is a cell which is visited it is denoted by true and we do this in order to not uh, re enqueue the already enqueued cells so that there is no you know confusion in the program so then we have the queue which we which takes an queue entry uh, object which is queue over here and it's represented in the form of a linked list now there's, uh, there are other representations in Java we can use but we used uh, a linked list over here as it was simple enough and we didn't need to complicate it further. So the queue is type object queue entry and uh, yeah it's a linked list. So then we set the first cell. The first cell is important in order to begin the actual uh, functioning of the program. So the queue visited of 0 was set to true. Visited of 0 is set to true means the, the first cell, the cell number 1 is set to true which means that the cell is visited. Now if it is visited it should be added to the queue. So queue entry s is equal to new queue entry which makes a new queue entry and we add that to the distance as 0 and the vertex as 0 again. So this actually means that the first cell as we said 0 0 is created and that queue entry is added to the queue which is created over here the queue which is named queue very instructively and then q entry q new entry q is created again what is q entry q e so this q e is basically used inside the while loop in order to reiterate through the entire q so let us see while a q dot is not empty so while q is not empty we will iterate this while loop again and again as we saw in the presentation it just goes on at, up till the queue is not empty and then qe is equal to q.p now what is q.p q.peak is basically uh, think of it as checking out the front or the or the the first added element in a queue if you know how a queue works in data structures i have a, a video about queues too so if q.peak is basically a function which will let you see inside the queue without actually removing the value here we have q.remove which re returns a value similar to q.peak but q.peak doesn't remove the value it just tells you what is in there and we add and as we have seen in the presentation we know which node we are talking about so int vertex is equal to qe.vertex and vertex will give us the value of the the value contained inside the cell and that will be set to the value of vertex and if vertex is n minus 1 which is 30 minus 1 in our uh, presentation we get 29 and if it is equal to equal to 29 you know that the end of the program has been reached and we have to break out of the loop and that happens exactly over here and until this vertex is not reached up till 30 we will not or 29 we will not get out of this loop and then as we see in the presentation we remove it we remove the uh, the first vertex out of the loop out of the queue and uh, we add the other six vertexes by this function over here into the loop so we have we are going from vertex plus one to vertex plus six so if the vertex value is 21 say you go from 22 to 28 and so on and so forth and and until i is less than n because if you go above the value of i, is I, I of equal to n then you're going to values of 30 31 32 which is not really feasible and that will cause a segmentation fault and then you're incrementing i in the for loop and then you check if visited of i is equal to equal to false only then will you enter this uh, this if block and add the cell actually so let us see what we do in this thing. If it is true, if visited is true, you will not add it. But if it is false, you will add, add it. So 
Q entry of cell, we name it cell and we call it make a new Q entry. And cell dot distance is equal to the previous distance of what we peaked over here, the, the one which we peaked and removed that distance plus one. As we have seen in the presentation, we add the distance plus one. And then we said the visited of i is equal to true. And then we check if board of i is equal to equal to minus one, we we sell uh, we call the cell dot vertex equal to board of i or the contents of the board, which we saw in the presentation, which and, and i is board of i is set to minus one in every board, which which does not have ladders or does not have snakes. So you can see where this is coming from. Cell dot vertex equal to board of i, else if there is a ladder or a snake, cell dot vertex equal to i which will give the corresponding value and then you add the queue to the cell and this entire step is done again and again and again until the queue is empty and when the queue is empty you end the program and that's how the entire thing works and you return QE dot distance to this value over here and it's done so that's how the program actually works um, if you don't believe me you can write it down on a piece of paper and iterate through it over and over again watch the presentation again so yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I, I, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And yeah, thanks for watching.